Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Eric K. Johnson is training us on how to leverage a podcast audience to attract more of our ideal clients, build our influence in our niche, and build our respective businesses. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for Eric that are more of the get to know you uh, variety. Eric's bio, you can read in the VBN uh, meetup. Eric, your first question. There's uh, tons of podcasts out there. I believe at last count, it was something in the order of 3 million. Uh, how on earth can an expert cut through the noise and stand out from everyone else? Roger, thanks for having me tonight. Uh, yeah, that's one of the big questions is uh, how do I get noticed? How do I stand out? How do I stand out from everybody else? And uh, that's one thing a lot of the podcast gurus don't teach you. They teach you how to launch your uh, launch your podcast and you get it up and running and you go, OK, now what? And uh, and that's where I come in. The, the biggest uh, the best way to get noticed with your podcast is through your story, telling your story, your own personal story and letting your audience get to know you and like you and trust you through the content that you share and the stories that you tell. If you have, uh, let's say you teach the six steps to success, anybody can copy your six steps to success and they can go teach it on their podcast. It'd be the same show. The only thing that makes you different and makes you stand out is, is your personality and the stories that you bring to your show each and every week. Okay, good. And now our second question is uh, about making money on a podcast. Is it really possible? Well, the people that come to me for coaching and we talk about making money with your show, um, I, I tell everybody, you don't make money from your podcast, you make money with your podcast. You need, you need to use your podcast to market whatever it is you have to sell. That could be a product. It could be a service. Uh, it could be an affiliate offer. But you don't actually make money from the podcast. Like radio sells advertising on the radio station. And, and that's how the radio station generates their revenue. Spent the last 30 years in radio. And that was the, the concept. But so many people are fleeing traditional media because it's all loaded up with advertisements. You spend eight or 10 minutes every time a commercial break comes on the radio. And you sit around. By that time, you're already to where you're going. So... You really don't want to fill up your your podcast with a bunch of ads and sponsorships because that's what everybody's trying to get away from. So use your um, use your podcast to grow your authority and demonstrate your authority in your space, and then invite clients to come and work with you. That's the best way to make money with a podcast. Okay, so you can make money from a podcast, but it's indirect. It is. It's All it's right. make money with your podcast, not from your podcast. Great. Like your podcast isn't kicking off cash. Okay, that's really, that clarity is really important. Uh, attendees, uh, if you have any questions in the course of Eric's uh, training, would you please, I'm just going to admit somebody, oh no, Eric's done it. Would you please type them into the chat and then at strategic points during Eric's training, I'll interrupt him and ask him uh, uh, questions. Uh, secondly, you're going to be sent a link uh, to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes will increase your ability to absorb content uh, by as much as 30%. Eric, are you ready to wow us? <laughs> Absolutely. Can't wait to get started. Then take it away. She's all yours. You bet. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. It's uh, how to grow to your audience and attract your ideal clients using a podcast. I want to help you take your content and uh, really figure out a way to grow your audience, grow your influence and connect with people. Big thanks to uh, to Roger for including me tonight as uh, as part of this Vancouver Business Network meetup. I'm really excited to be here today and uh, share with uh, share with you what I've learned here over the past 
30 years in radio and really help you grow your business and use a podcast to uh, to grow your influence in whatever niche that you're in. I also want to congratulate you for joining us tonight for just being here on this training because the information that I'm going to share with you tonight will really help you grow your influence and uh, and make a big difference in your life and in your journey and in your business but you have to take action with it. A lot of times we go to, to a lot of these trainings and we get a whole lot of information and we get all excited and then we do nothing with it. And, and I want you to take action with what I'm going to teach you. I want to help you do just that. I want to give you some action items that you can take home and uh, really put into effect. I am Eric K. Johnson. My, my business is Podcast Talent Coach. And in this, uh, in this training tonight, I'm going to show you three things. I'm going to show you three ways that you can attract your ideal clients with your content and uh, that this this uh, attraction process will have clients knocking down your door to work with you and and really understand what it is you have to offer them you're also going to learn the three p's that are necessary for uh, successful content creation um, that most podcast gurus don't teach you most content gurus don't teach you i'm going to go over those with you tonight as well and you're also going to learn why now is the ideal time to take advantage of one of the fastest growing platforms available to you today. When you stay all the way to the end of the training tonight, I'm going to give you a, a free gift that will help you start right now. I'm also going to give you an opportunity to uh, work directly with Roger and me to uh, start using your content to attract your clients and really start uh, making money using your content. So today's training can really make a big difference if you take action, like we talked about before. Roger uh, mentioned this earlier, you need to pay attention, you need to take notes. There are gonna be some nuances that we go over today. All of this will do you no good unless you actually take it and, and, and uh, take action with it. So if you uh, have some distractions going on, if you're in your email or on Facebook or you're checking other things, you're gonna miss a lot of the nuances and a lot of the things we go over tonight that will really help you uh, make a difference. So turn off all your distractions. Just give me your full attention here for about the next 45 minutes or so. Make sure you have that pen and paper so you can take some notes, jot down some action items, things that you want to do in your journey um, that can help you reach your goals. There are nuances that I'm going to give you tonight that uh, you're going to want to make sure you remember. You're going to want to jot those down along the way so you can actually put this training into action. So many times we go to these trainings, we go to we go to free webinars or we go to conferences and we get a whole bunch of information and we write it all down. And then we go back home, we return to our to-do lists or our, uh, we get back to our everyday life and the training just goes in the drawer and we don't do anything with it. We never put it into action. And I want to see you put it into action. I want to give you a strategy so you can implement what you learn and you can actually uh, get where you want to go. So thanks for being here. If you're new to Podcast Talent Coach, my name is Eric K. Johnson. I, I got a degree in architecture. So uh, architecture to podcasting was quite the journey for me. Uh, I actually spent a little time in architecture, but then got into radio. And this little hut right here is, um, this was actually the very first radio station I ever worked at. There was four rooms in this little Quonset hut. If you, uh, if you actually count the bathroom, there was the bathroom, the studio, the office, and the entryway. And the transmitter actually sat right on the other side of the board. So I can't imagine what sort of radio waves I was picking up from that sitting in this little building all day long. I fell into radio uh, completely by accident. Uh, my brother actually worked at this radio station and I was a college kid and I figured I could use some extra college money. And so I got a job doing the same thing he was doing, fully intending to finish my architecture degree and go into architecture. Uh, but that didn't happen. And my, my journey took me to where I am today. We grew up with very little money. We grew up in this little house right here. I uh, lived in that, that little room right there in the bottom right. Uh, my, my mom and dad bought this for uh, $20,000. Uh, and then they got divorced and my mom raised my brother and I, and she always had a little side hustle going, which is kind of where I developed my entrepreneurial excitement. And uh, I always was, was creating in the garage. We'd have haunted houses for the kids in the neighborhood, or I'd put on magic shows, or I was always, always hustling a buck in the neighborhood. And that all came from my mom. She, she taught me what I needed to do and, and uh, to get where I wanted to go. And 
I want to share a little bit of that with you today. So I was getting my architecture degree right here. This is the uh, University of Nebraska College of Architecture. I did end up finishing my architecture degree. Um, when we when I was getting the degree, though, we had to present our designs. We would create, we would design a, a golf course country club, or we would design a gym or something like that. And I love designing. I love pencil and paper and creating and designing and everything. Well, when we were done designing, we had to get up and present it in front of our, our peers and, and a group of judges. And I hated presenting. I love to design, but I, I didn't want to get up in front of anybody. I hated speech class in high school, and I surely didn't want to get up in front of my peers in college. And I hated presenting, uh, but music was always a passion for me. And so as I was getting my architecture degree, I took a class called Broadcasting for the Non-Major because I was always working at a radio station already. And I thought, well, here's an easy A. I'll just go take that class and learn what I already know and get the A. So while I did that, that all of a sudden turned into becoming the music director at the campus radio station. And then that turned into a full-time gig at a real radio station. And I finished my architecture degree and just stayed in radio. And uh, my parents were pretty proud of all the money they spent for the architecture degree, but I had a really, really fun job. And so since then, I've gone on to interview a lot of amazing people like George Strait. And uh, back in college, I interviewed Ice-T and I got to interview the Zac Brown Band and Lady Gaga and Blake Shelton and all these other great people. And it's been amazing. But over the last 30 years that I've been in radio, and 25 years that I've been coaching radio talent in the, the last seven or eight years I've been coaching podcasting talent. I've been able to build these effective marketing campaigns that not only serve clients, but attract listeners to our content. And I've learned those effective traits of powerful marketing so I can, I can put them to use. Now, I, I don't tell you all of this to impress you and I don't say, hey, ooh, look at me and Zach Brown Band. Uh, what I tell you this because I want you to understand that if I can conquer the imposter syndrome and put myself out there on a podcast, you can too. All right. If this introverted kid from a, a low income neighborhood can learn how to create powerful content and really connect with my audience and create successful radio stations and su successful podcasts and use that content to, to attract and really help clients that you can do the same thing. If I can do it, you can do it. It's really not that difficult. A podcast allows you an amazing opportunity to demonstrate your authority while talking about a topic that you love. I mean, can you imagine just getting on and talking about something you love week in and week out? How great would that be? But if you structure your podcast and your content correctly, wherever you're creating content, whether that's YouTube or a blog or a podcast, if you structure the content correctly, it can be an amazing tool that can help you drive your business and generate revenue. And I want to show you a little bit of that tonight. You know, I went on to attain my uh, master's of business administration, and then I spent that 30 years in radio correct creating these marketing campaigns because it's all about attracting listeners and clients alike. I want to bring them to our content so we can use that content to build a relationship with our audience. I use the skills that I've learned in radio and in marketing and in podcasting and in my uh, MBA program to teach podcasters now how to do the same thing. Since 2013, I've been helping podcasters take their content and shape it Take that information and transform it into engaging entertainment so your podcasters fall in love or your, your listeners fall in love with you and want to uh, come and join you each and every week. And the proven ideas that I've, that I've developed over the years have been distilled now into various ways that you can use your content to attract those ideal clients. So are you leveraging your content? Are you leveraging your knowledge to its full potential to really build your authority and grow your business? That's what we want to talk about tonight. We want to talk about how you can use your knowledge and what you do to, to drive your business, to attract ideal clients to what you do. 
I want to show you three powerful ways you can attract your ideal clients using your content without spending hours upon hours trying to create great content or by learning. I don't want you to do all that. I want you to spend time taking action. I want you to spend just a few hours a week publishing great content on a consistent basis and attracting your ideal clients. More time doing, more time taking action, less time learning. Now, there are actually seven different ways you can attract your ideal clients with your content because we're limited time tonight. I, I'll, I'll show you how you can get all seven at the end. I want to go over three of those ways with you tonight so you can start uh, start implementing them. You don't have to implement all three. You don't have to implement all seven. Pick the one that works for you. That's the best thing about it. You can pick the one that makes the most sense for you and implement that in your business. The first way you can attract your ideal clients using your content is by demonstrating your products and your services, your courses, your, your, uh, your books, the products that you have. Give your audience a little sample of that stuff and then just tell them where to buy it, how they can get more of it. This Having a podcast where you, where you demonstrate your authority in the space and your knowledge of the space and you, you demonstrate a little bit of what your product or your service or your course does, it's like a... It's like an infomercial for you each and every week. You're getting in front. It's like a little webinar. You're getting in front of your audience. You're helping them with some great content. And then you're offering the opportunity to buy even more of it. And they still get great value from your free content. They don't have to buy in order to benefit from your show, but they do have the opportunity. And that's how you make money with your podcast. You're marketing your, your, your goods, the things you have to sell. You're offering the help on your show. And then you're just showing your clients how to get more of that help. So do you have a book or a course or something like that that you might be able to demonstrate or highlight? That's the way to do it. Let me show you a little case study. This here is Oscar Tromboli. Oscar came to me um, for coaching. He had the desire to take his podcast and really strengthen the connection that he had between his podcast and his consulting business. Oscar helps, um, Oscar helps like CEOs and big business leaders listen better. He's a listening coach. Uh, season one of his podcast, Oscar did these phenomenal interviews. He interviewed all of these great CEOs about listening, and he was uh, he was fantastic at it. But he was heading into season two, and he wanted season two of his show to be more about his teaching of his five levels of listening. Now. Oscar is a mentor and a leadership coach and a speaker and an author and a podcaster and all this great stuff. His podcast and his book are both called Deep Listening Impact Beyond Words. And he goes in and he helps these people just listen better. And he's been doing it for 30 years, bringing out the best in senior leadership and, and new generation leaders. And all these leaders come to Oscar and they're, they're frustrated with their organizational results and their own personal performance. And then Oscar gets them from feeling disoriented and confused to feeling energized and ready to create their legacy. Unfortunately, that wasn't coming out on his show. Oscar spent all of his time interviewing all of these great guests. And so he said, well, I, I have a podcast. We have a lot of listeners, but it's not driving my business. What am I doing wrong? And I said, Oscar, we spend too much time interviewing everybody else, not enough time demonstrating your authority. We need to figure out how to bring your superpower out. And so as we worked together, our challenge was to bring the power and authority that Oscar had, bring that out on his podcast and let his listeners uh, experience that. So our goal was to create engagement with his audience and really demonstrate his authority in the space. And then over time, that would help him grow his consultancy so he could demonstrate his authority and, and uh, on his show and he could gain new clients. So to build authority in his space, what we did is we started injecting him more into the episodes and we allowed listeners to get to know him. He started building that, that relationship. They got to know, like, and trust him. And he's now the author of three books. Um, he's got the deep listening impact beyond words, playing cards that helps you improve, improve your skills as a listener. And uh, he's been phenomenal. And now he's gone on to, uh, he's been asked to speak to big leadership teams and their organizations, all about the importance of uh, clarity to create change, how to be an effective listener, how to embrace the digital economy, the roles that you play in the advancement of your purpose and all of that great stuff. And now he's not only getting paid as a consultant, he's getting paid as a public speaker. 
because people get to know what he's all about and learn his magic sauce right there on his show. Then they contact him and invite him to come out to be a speaker to their organization. And he gets paid that way. So it's a great way to leverage what you do on your show to drive revenue for your business. And now Oscar's podcast is focused on the same material. He demonstrates his authority and, and his mastery of that space. And that allows potential clients to experience what his coaching and mentorship and consulting is all about. It's one way to use your podcast to drive your, uh, drive your business. The second way is to just to highlight your coaching. I listened to Shane and Jocelyn Sams. They have a podcast called the Flip Lifestyle Podcast. It's all based around their membership where they help you uh, create a membership site. And all they do on their podcast is invite members of their membership site on to get coaching. And they just demonstrate their coaching. It's a great way to demonstrate your coaching as an example for prospective clients. You can show potential clients exactly what you do and how your coaching works and the transformation that you offer people. And you do that right on your show. And you say, hey, here I am inter interviewing Mike. If you wanna be just like Mike, here, here's how you can sign up and, and take advantage of it. And then you just tell them how to sign up. So many people forget that call to action. They do a great job demonstrating their authority and getting people all excited about what they're doing, uh, but they don't tell people how to go sign up and get more of it. They don't wanna seem pushy. You know, I don't want to feel, I don't want people to think my podcast is all just trying to sell them something. Well, the, the truth is people want to work with you. If your podcast is doing the job and building that trust factor and getting that, building that, that knowledge of each other and building that relationship, then people will want to work with you. You should tell them how they can do that. So if you have clients or potential uh, uh, clients that you can bring on your show and interview, it's a great way to to demonstrate your coaching and, and get your word of mouth out. The third way I want to show you tonight is what Zoe uses. This is Zoe Routh. Zoe is one of Australia's uh, leading experts on people stuff. I said, Zoe, what do you do? I'm an expert on people stuff in leadership. I said, okay, what does that mean? Well, she goes, I go into uh, businesses and I help leaders and teams um, overcome those turf wars, you know, the silos that get built in big companies. I help them break down those silos so they can work better together. I build teamwork within organizations and she's worked with individuals and teams internationally. She's a rich, she's now in Australia. She's from Canada and she's worked with companies all around the world. And uh, I said, that's fantastic, Zoe. That's awesome. I said, how do you, uh, uh, what are your download numbers? How many downloads are you getting of your podcast? And Zoe said, I don't know. I don't even look at it. And I said, well, <laughs> how are you using it to drive your business if you don't even know what your downloads are? She goes, I don't use it in that way. I use my podcast to open doors to potential clients. Rather than making a cold call and saying, um, Hi, Roger. Uh, this is Eric Johnson with Podcast Talent Coach. I was wondering if I could get 15 minutes of your time to come in and pitch you. And Roger goes, nope, sorry, I don't have time and hangs up on me. What Zoe does is Zoe reaches out to Roger and says, hey, Roger, I have an amazing podcast where we talk to CEOs just like you. And I would love to interview you on my show to demonstrate exactly what you do to my audience. Would you be interested in being a guest on my podcast? And they say, well, absolutely. I'd love to come on your podcast and, and market my company. Why wouldn't I? And then so she starts the process of going through the pre-interview and exchanging emails and they build that relationship. And then the CEO comes on her show for the interview. And then she does the follow-up and when it's going to be posted. And she builds that relationship and she shows the CEO what she does in her business and then eventually, maybe down the road, three months or six months, it leads to a business relationship. The same thing you would do with a cold call. She uses her podcast to leverage that authority to open doors to her ideal clients. It's a great way to get in and do it. Another way to, to uh, attract your ideal clients with your podcasts is to get the media to talk about you. If you can get the media talking about what you do just by becoming an available expert in your field, 
you can get free marketing for whatever you do for your business or your, your entrepreneurial activities. Your content actually demonstrates to the media that you know what you're doing, that you can hold your own as an expert, that you can actually perform in front of a microphone. This is kind of a, like an as seen on TV sort of thing. Like I do my podcast, I know what I'm doing. I can get in front of a microphone and string two sentences together. And then you just tell the media how to get more of you. You have a link on your website. Yeah, for interview opportunities, click here and it gives your information. It's kind of like your content is your resume. It shows to the media exactly how knowledgeable you are and what you do. And publishing content is just a, a great way to let people, potential clients and others, get to know, like, and trust you. Your content helps build your authority and your niche and really helps turn you into an influencer. That's what it's all about. Now, there are three ways you can share your content online. We talked about this before. You can, you can share it with video or with audio or with text. You can publish it through blogs. You can publish your content on uh, YouTube videos, or you can publish your content through a podcast. Now, I don't want to be biased or anything, but there is one way I think is best of all three, and you could probably guess which format that is. But there, there are really three reasons, that legitimate reasons that I think podcasting is better than video and blogs uh, for your content when you get out to share it. And the first reason is because it's portable. People can take a podcast with them and consume it as they're doing other things. If I go out on a run, I can listen to your podcast while I'm getting a, a jog in. Kind of difficult to read a blog while I'm out on a jog. Some people try to do it, I don't know. Driving, I can listen to a podcast while I'm driving. You can't listen, you can't watch a video very easily or read a blog while you're driving. Same thing, I can take a shower and listen to your podcast. Can't really watch a video in the shower very easily. So it's portable, it's great. You can take it with you. People can do it, wh whatever they're doing. The second reason I love podcasting is the numbers are in your favor. If you just look at the studies that have been published recently, Jacobs Media's uh, Tech Survey 2020 says one in four radio listeners now consume podcasts at least every week. That means 25% of the population is listening to a podcast at least once a week. I mean, the, the people are right there for you. 90 million people last month in the U.S. alone over the age of 12 have listened to a podcast. 90 million in the last month just in the U.S., according to Edison Research. That's about 32% of the U.S. population over the age of 12 consuming podcasts. A third of your U.S. population over 12 listening to podcasts. This is where your audience is, and it's growing like crazy right now. According to the Nielsen Company, they're the ones that do the radio and uh, television ratings. According to Nielsen, the total podcast audience is growing at a compound average rate of 20%. And if you do some quick math, that means the podcast audience could double in the next five years. I mean, podcasting is huge right now, and it's just getting better. It's got a big, bright future, and now's the time to get in. So, Eric, Eric I have a few questions yeah. for me. Let me know when you're ready. Sure. Let me get through the numbers here, and then we'll uh, hit a couple questions. Okay. All right. So um, the future is huge. Right now, the last reason I love podcasting is because it's still young. Right now, there are about 1 million podcasts published on Apple Podcasts. About half of those are actively published. And you think, oh, Eric, how am I going to how, how am I going to be one in a million? How am I going to stand out in that? Well, 1 million podcasts is compared to 600 million blogs. So do you want to be one in a million or one in 600 million? Which is it going to be easier to stand out? If you compare that to YouTube, there are actually 31 million YouTube channels, according to YouTube in 2020. That's not active creators. That's actual channels. There are 50 million content creators and 1.3 billion YouTube videos. So you could try and be one in a million or one in 31 million. The numbers are in your favor. So what you want to do is create your podcast so your content's on a platform that's portable it's growing it's still young and it has plenty of opportunity the space is wide open right now for you to take a podcast and leverage it to get where you want to go roger let's hit a couple of those questions okay question from adam i currently have a new blog and thought i may just do a podcast where i just read my blog articles for those people who prefer to listen versus read kind of like the news. Some people prefer one or the other. 
your thoughts, please. I love syndication of content. I love being able to take your content and publishing it over all three platforms. If you have the time and the bandwidth in your life in order to do that, I highly recommend that. I would highly recommend starting with the video because you can take the YouTube video, shoot that video, strip the audio from it, use the audio as your podcast, transcribe it and use it as the blog post. And you could actually do all three. Now, when it comes to turning your blog post into a podcast, I wouldn't read it word for word because it doesn't bring out who you are. It doesn't bring out your personality and, and your spark. We read, we speak much differently than we, we uh, write. And so the written word will be much different than the, the spoken word. There, it, it will sound very stiff and unnatural. So if you're going to turn your blog post into a podcast, I would create um, notes, an outline, and then I would present it from an outline rather than scripting it. It's like if you watch somebody on stage giving a speech, if they're just reading their speech, they're not very engaging. But if they're using an outline and telling you stories in their own words, it becomes much more engaging. So two-part answer, I love turning the blog post into a podcast. Don't read it. Second question, this one is from Renee. Any tips on how to improve interviewing guests on a podcast or best ways to prep for the interview? Absolutely. Um, that would be a whole hour long presentation in itself. If you go to podcasttalentcoach.com, um, I have 300 episodes of my podcast published already. And a lot of those, um, a lot of those are based around interviewing and interviewing style and interviewing skills. So I would recommend you go find some of those episodes and listen to them. They will help you. And in those, they will give you resources. I have, I have a bunch of podcast interview resources that will help you. If you just go to the front page of podcasttalentcoach.com, you can see the ultimate 17 podcast interview questions ever. These are the best questions I've been able to come up with over the last 30 years of interviewing those big stars I told you about. Um, the best way to interview somebody is get them to tell stories get them to tell stories that will make your content unique. Nobody wants to hear about their bio. Nobody wants to use the formatic questions that your guest has provided you ask them things. Nobody's asked them before. And you do that by asking them to tell you stories, uh, go to podcasttalentcoach.com. There's tons of interviewing resources over there to do that. Question from Adam, any tips on how to improve enunciation? Focus on it. It will feel awkward at first, uh, but the more you uh, the more you practice enunciating, the better you will get. I would put a little a a little note on your computer monitor as you record that simply says enunciate, and you should also try and smile as well as you're even though people can't see you as you're recording, they can hear the smile in your voice, and if it just says smile and enunciate. You will, uh, you will start doing that naturally as you go through it. Uh, so it will feel awkward and uh, unnatural at first, but you will get to the point where you enunciate. It just takes reminding yourself. Question from Mike. Is it better to have specific, more technical and narrow focused content, or would it be better to have content that is less technical and more general? Well, technical and general are two different things. Uh, I don't think they go hand in hand. Uh, narrow or, you know, narrow niche or general broad are, are the opposite ends of that. I would go narrow niche. Technical, technical is possible, but you can't simply be information. It has to be engaging. So if, you, um, if you've ever watched the show, uh, How It Was Built, it's a lot of information, but they turn it into entertainment by telling the stories about it and bringing it to life. So I would niche down. I would definitely be niche because your, your show can't be for everybody. You have to have a target audience. You, you know, if I'm listening to a business show, I don't want to listen to a business show. I want to listen to a show for online entrepreneurs. It's much more niche and it's more of what I do. If it's just business and one day we're talking to the uh, CEO of Ford Motor Company and the next day we're talking to somebody who's building a, a business out of their garage, it's two totally different audiences. 
So niche down, be narrow. Uh, but if you're going to take your technical information, make it entertaining. Jacinta wants to know if you coach or you do podcast. Me personally, I do both. I, I, my podcast is how I attract clients. I give them an example of what I do and how I teach and how I coach on my podcast. And uh, if you want to work with me and I can help you grow your podcast, that's, that's my business. Lillian wants to know, where do we distribute our podcast? There are so many podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Cashbox, Podchaser, Patreon, et cetera. The more the better, question mark. How do yes. we choose the most effective one for us? You put your podcast on a hosting service like Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. Um, if you put it on Libsyn, then Libsyn distributes it to all the players. Your podcast isn't hosted on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify or any of those. Your podcast is hosted at your hosting service like Blueberry or Libsyn. And then, um, and then it gets distributed to all the players. If you want a free month of Libsyn, if you go to, to Libsyn.com and use the promo code PTC for Podcast Talent Coach, you get your first month free. Uh, Jacinta, so podcast is mainly interviews, question mark. I am not all that familiar with podcasts. I think uh, Eric, uh, Jacinta is asking you to go right back to the basics and, and describe what a podcast is. You bet. So a podcast is simply uh, a show, an audio show that you subscribe to. So if you go, if you open your iPhone, uh, there's a podcast app on there and you can find shows that you like to and you can subscribe to them. Then every time a show is released, um, you are subscribed to it. So it shows up in your podcast player like uh, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify or iHeartRadio, whatever you're listening to. It shows up right there. Most podcasts today are interview podcasts. They don't have to be. In fact, I recommend your show is not 100% interview style because like Oscar's issue, if it's just an interview, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about the other person's superpower and not building your relationship with your audience. You have to carve out time to be yourself on there. My show is primarily just me talking. I just teach on my show. Um, there are probably... 10 or 12 episodes out of the 317 where I actually interview people. The, the first 297 episodes were just me teaching. I didn't interview anybody. In fact, no other voice was on my show until episode 200. Great. Uh, those are the last questions. That's, that's it. Over back to you. Great. So um, let's talk about the three big challenges a lot of podcasters face as they're trying to build their podcast and grow their audience. First, they can't figure out how to make money. Uh, the second issue is they make it far too complicated than it needs to be. I know a lot of what I'm telling you sounds really complicated. I'm going to give you a tool, a free tool that makes it super easy, uh, and they don't know where to start, and I'm going to help you do that as well. But before I get to the answer uh, to those challenges, I want to teach you the secret that most podcast gurus don't teach you, and that is getting listeners to come and listen to your show isn't enough. You can't just simply keep bringing people to the show. You need to develop a plan to actually keep them coming back to listen time and time again. If you're doing nothing to keep your current listeners, you, you won't grow your podcast. You're just going to bring people in the front door to your party and they're all going to be walking out the back back door. You know, many podcast gurus will teach you how to create a podcast. You record your interview, you convert it to an MP3, you upload it to your podcast host and you have a podcast. Poof, there it is. It's really not that difficult. But then now what? Like some podcast gurus might teach you how to get a few listeners, but that's where that's where most people stop teaching. And the problem is if you keep putting water in a bucket that has holes in the bottom, then it becomes really, really difficult to increase the amount of water in the bucket because it keeps leaking out. And the same thing is true with your podcast. If you keep adding listeners, but they don't stick around, your audience doesn't come back, your authority isn't going to grow. Your audience isn't gonna, going to grow. If you want to grow your podcast and your business and your authority, you need to build it on a solid foundation and a solid strategy. And I've developed the audience explosion blueprint that does just that. Um, my audience explosion blueprint is built on the three P's for successful content creation. It's promotion, programming, and personality. Now, your promotion, that's what brings people to your content. You go out and you tell people who you are, let them get to know you. 
invite them to come join the party. Uh, your programming, that's the actual content. That's what people go, oh yeah, I, I have a podcast. I would love to attract ideal clients. Sounds like that podcast might be for me. They come and check it out. That's your content, your programming. And then your personality, that's the way that people get to know who you are. They get to know you, like you, and trust you. Through the stories that you tell and the personality that you bring out on your show, that's where the magic happens. That's where the relationship starts. People get to know what you believe and, and uh, what you value by that personality, by the stories that you, that you bring out on your show. And so many people forget this critical element. They think it can be all about their information, all about their teaching and their six steps. But your content needs to be entertaining. There's only one reason people listen to anything. If they're driving in their car, there's only one reason they have the radio on or a podcast or an audio book or anything. And that reason is for companionship. They don't want to be alone. They don't want to do whatever they're doing by themselves. If you're out on a jog, you have your earbuds in. Why? Because you don't want to be alone. When you're driving, when you're mowing, when you're walking, whatever it is you're doing when you're listening to audio, it's so you can have that companionship. And that's where that storytelling and that personality uh, comes about. That's what you need to do. So you want to see how you can leverage your podcast to grow your business. That's what we want to talk about today, how you can easily overcome those three challenges. One of the big challenges that I mentioned was podcasters can't figure out how to make money with a podcast. And we went over a few of those. Many people believe that sponsorships and advertising is the easiest way. Like I'll just build an audience and go get a sponsor. But it's not the easiest way. That's not true at all. In fact, getting ads and sponsors, that's probably the hardest way to make money with your podcast because it's a full-time job going out and landing a sponsor. And they're only paying you one time. So you have to do it over and over and over again. And you really shouldn't clutter up your show with ads. We talked about that earlier. So let's talk about a few of the reasons podcasts don't make money. First reason you don't make money with a podcast is because you don't have anything to sell. <laughs> if you want to make money with a podcast, you have to have something to sell. This could be a product service, could be an affiliate program. When podcasters come to me, our first step is to lay out their strategy. What do you want to achieve uh, 12 months from now? And most of them tell me, I want to grow my audience and make money with my podcast. That's what comes up most often. I say, great, what are you selling? And they look at me with this blank stare, like, uh, I don't, nothing. <laughs> like, I go, well, if your listeners can't give you money for something, you're not going to make money with your podcast. So have something to sell. So then some people say, oh yeah, I have a, I have a course to sell or something. And I listen to their show and nowhere on their show do they actually ask for the sale. I had a buddy who had a course. I'd known him for probably six months at this time. And he mentions his course in passing. Like, oh, yeah, in my, in my course, I talk about that. And I said, wait a minute, you have a course? He goes, oh, yeah, I've, I've had it out for a couple of years. And I go, how have I known you for six months and I don't know that you have this course? And he goes, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want people to think I'm just trying to sell them something. I don't want to seem pushy. And I said, I get that, but you don't mention it at all. How are people going to buy it if you never talk about it? Like, you actually have to ask for the sale. Now, I know you don't want to seem pushy, but if you're, if you're truly helping people on your show and you're building that rapport and you're building that relationship and you're offering them content that can help them. And then you're simply saying, if you want more of this, here's an opportunity for you to get even deeper. That's just helping them. That's not being pushy. If you go through building the rapport and the relationship, the yes just becomes a formality because you've given them so much value and they want more of that value. And you say, well, here's the opportunity for you to get more of that. But you have to help your listeners succeed first. And that's the third, uh, the third way, reason, the third reason uh, podcasts don't make money is because you're not seeking to help first. It's just a big infomercial. You may not be making money because you're not seeking to help your audience before you try to sell them. You need to offer them value. It's just like Zig Ziglar said, you can have anything you want in life just as long as you help enough other people get what they want. And if you help people on your podcast, you give them what they need, you address it with the heart of a teacher, help them succeed, then, then the sale will come. Trust in it. The next reason podcasts don't make money is you haven't uncovered the true pain. You know, that superficial, well, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to build an online business. Sounds, sounds like a reasonable pain, right? And, uh, 
But, but when you start digging into it, building the business isn't really the pain. Finding time in her schedule to be at home with her kids is the real pain. Or she's a single mom and she doesn't have daycare and she wants to work from home. That's why she wants to build the online business. There's the real pain. You have to uncover the true pain to, to really make money with your show. And on your show, you could be answering questions from your audience as they're emailing those in. The more questions you answer, the more commonalities you will see in those questions, and you'll be able to uh, address the true pain. The next reason podcasts don't make money is you haven't explained the true transformation and benefit they receive from whatever it is you have to sell. Now, this doesn't mean that it isn't good. They just don't understand uh, how your product or your coaching or your whatever it is you're selling will transform them into their ideal selves. It doesn't mean that what you're selling isn't good. It means that listeners just don't fully understand it. They don't fully understand the benefit of your stuff, the, the transformation they're going to experience. You have to remember, people don't buy products and services, right? They buy products, uh, they, they buy what the products and services can do for them. If you think of the last birthday cake you went out and you purchased, uh, why did you buy a birthday cake? Why didn't you buy brownies or a pie? Like, why was it a cake? I mean, they all still have flour and sugar and a whole bunch of bad stuff in it for you, right? But you bought the birthday cake because of what the birthday cake represents. You, you bought the, the joy of eating the cake and celebrating the event. That's why you didn't buy a pie. It's what the cake represents. It's not the flour and sugar and frosting. So sell them the experience. Sell them the true transformation. Final reason podcasts don't make money is they don't, they don't trust you. They don't believe that it will work for them. Once you explain the transformation, your ideal clients have to believe you. They have to believe that it will work for them. And, you know, you've heard the saying that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Build that trust using your podcast. Be consistent on delivering on your promises each and every week. That's the way. Your podcast gives you that great opportunity to build relationships, relationships that turn into friendships. If you think of the podcast hosts or the radio hosts you really enjoy, you probably feel like you know them so well that you could meet up with them after work and, and grab a drink down at the local pub because you know everything about them through the stories that they tell. That's how powerful relationships are built. Powerful relationships aren't built because you were there with them, everything that happened. You didn't go through every event of your best friend's life, but your best friend told you about every event of their life and you feel like you were right there with them. That's how a friendship comes to be. And that's what a podcast allows you to do. It's a great opportunity uh, for you to build that relationship. The Eric, second challenge. I've got, uh, I've got a few questions. Oh, yeah, you bet. Let me know when's a good time to interrupt you. Let's jump in right here. Okay. Jadina asks two questions. They're related. What is the recommendation? What is your recommendation for the amount of time? And what is your recommendation for the length of time the podcast should be? I don't understand the difference between amount of time and length of time. So let's go the length of a podcast. What's the right length of a podcast? There isn't a right length. The, there's no such thing as too long, only too boring. As long as you are engaging your audience, your podcast is the right length. There are successful podcasts that are seven minutes long. There are successful podcasts that are three and a half hours long. There are daily podcasts that are successful. There are monthly podcasts that are successful. You just be consistent. If you're going to do a 30 minute show, do a 30 minute show every week. Same day, same time. People are creatures of habit. They're going to get in the habit of listening to your show. Be consistent. Uh, Jacinta wants one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching with you. Uh, do you do that? Uh, related question is, and how would she reach out to you? Podcasttalentcoach.com slash coaching. And yes, you do that. You, you coach. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Uh, Adam, recommendations on how much, what kind of equipment is needed for podcasts? Um, we're going to get into that here in two minutes. Okay. Uh, how do you develop your audience for a podcast? From Simon. Get in front of people who don't already know who you are. Pevand, how long and how often should a podcast be posted? Um, I would suggest you start posting it once a week 
People are creatures of habit. They're going to listen to your podcast same time, same day, every week. I listen to my favorite podcasts every Saturday when I'm out running errands. I don't care what day it gets published as long as it's there every Saturday when I go to listen to it. I think one of them gets published every Monday. One of them gets published every Friday. I listen to both of them Saturday as I'm out driving around. Be consistent. Question from Mike. Have to leave, but we'll find the record. Oh, <laughs> not a question. Sorry. Mike, <laughs> See you, Mike. Thanks for Mike, being here. <laughs> Mike is just thanking us. No more questions. Uh, yeah. Back to you, Eric. Great. Let's talk about the second challenge, and that's uh, people make it more complicated than it needs to be. And these are the five steps to launching a podcast. If you go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash launch, you'll find a whole launch program that will show you exactly what you need to do to launch. It's a 21 step program. You can launch your podcast in 30 days. It's not difficult. Do not spend a lot of money on equipment. You need about a hundred dollars worth of equipment. Go to Amazon, look for a Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, Samson Q2U, the letter Q, the number two, the letter U. It's about a 60 or $70 USB microphone. It comes with this holder right here, plugs right into your computer. That's all you need. Don't go spend a whole lot of money. The five steps to growing, to a building a podcast, you need a purpose. You have to have a strong why. If you don't have a strong why, creating a podcast is going to feel like work. You have to have a true passion for it. Make sure you're talking about something you absolutely love. Step two is your program. That's going to be your niche. That's going to be your content, what you're talking about, who it's designed for. Get clear, niche down, find that focus. The third way, the third step is your platform. What does your show look like? What format is it going to be? Is it going to be an interview style show? Is it going to be a, a two-person show? Is it going to be a magazine style show, a documentary style show? There are a lot of platforms. The key is to choose one that you love, something you, if you enjoy interviewing people, make it an interview show. If you hate interviewing people, you don't like talking to anybody, make it a solo show. The the best part about it is it's your podcast and whenever you want to change it, you can do it because there are no rules. It's your show. The fourth step in creating your podcast is to produce it. That's really easy. We talked about this earlier. You record it, you edit it, you export it, you post it. That's it. You're done. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Doesn't need any processing or bells and whistles or all that. Don't make the gear complicated. It's not that difficult. All right. Then finally, you promote it. That was the question earlier. How do you get people to come to your show? You get out and you get in front of uh, new people, people who don't know who you are. You bring them to your uh, you bring them to your show. That's um, that's the whole key. Now, um, podcasters tell me um, they, they really don't know where to start. Like, and I'd love to show you how you can become unique, how you can stand out in your niche. And it's all about just building a system. I mean, what would it mean to your business and, and to what you're doing to growing your authority? If you had a way to connect with the big fish in your audience each and every week, and you had a chance to talk to them and share your, your expertise and your authority, and you could serve them and help them by inviting them to come check out your show. And you can nurture that relationship and build yourself an audience that you can leverage. It's super easy. Just go through the five steps to build your podcast and then just figure out where to start. And we're going to talk about how to use your podcast to, to drive your business and build your brand. And I know you've been figuring out um, ways to do that, trying to find unique ways to reach your potential clients. You want to bring those clients into your business. And over the last few minutes we've been together, I've given you some ideas that you can incorporate into your podcast or into your show. If you want to launch a podcast, if you head to podcasttalentcoach.com, there are great ideas there and I'd love to help you. But wouldn't it be awesome if every week you had a podcast and you could talk to your ideal clients each and every week? Not only that, you have them subscribe to it so they're requesting it. They're like, yes, Eric, I would love to have you talk to me every week for 30 minutes. That would be fantastic. Where do I sign up? That's what a podcast does for you. Every week they're, they're subscribed and they get it on their phone and they make it super easy to share your authority with them. And launching a podcast is a lot easier than you think. It takes a lot less work than you can imagine. And it's so much more effective than the other methods at attracting an audience. The ways we talked about, it's portable. The, the numbers are growing. It could double in the next five years. 90 million people in the US alone are already listening uh, it's it's fantastic. And podcasting is strong. And now's the time to start. So I would love to to help you do that. 
I want to make it easy for you to launch. You can get your 21 step podcast launch checklist. It's a, a video series along with a checklist. A checklist looks just like this. You just walk through it and you can have your uh, podcast up and running in 30 days. I, I'll give you a list of resources too. I'll tell you the exact gear to go out and buy. So you don't have to go spend a ton of time trying to figure out the right gear and spending way too much money. And Roger asked me if I could give you a gift that would really make a difference in what you're doing as you're trying to build your businesses and, and take action. And this right here, this resource can do it for you. This can get your podcast up and running. But as we talked about earlier, you get the show launched and then you go, okay, now what? And now what, where do I go from here? And this podcast resource section it isn't my way or the highway. It gives you options for each tool and it's going to save you a lot of time and money searching for the right thing. Um, but what I want you to do is get your podcast launch and then use it to attract your ideal clients. I want to give you a way to fast track using your podcast to drive your business. Roger and I are going to be conducting a workshop next Monday, January 11th. It's an all day workshop. It's going to walk you through that, that uh, launch checklist. And we'll do that briefly in the first quarter of the, uh, of the workshop. And I'll show you exactly how to get your podcast up and running. And then the next three quarters of the workshop, we're going to build your podcast audience and money machine. I'm going to help you build the, the right foundation for your podcast. And then you're going to learn the additional four ways to attract your ideal clients with a podcast. And we're going to build your, your podcast profit framework. It happens next Monday, January 11th. It happens 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. That is Pacific time. And this podcast workshop is right for you. If you want to grow your audience and increase your downloads for your podcast and add subscribers so you can build that audience where you can leverage your authority and you can leverage that audience and authority to make money in your niche and monetize your podcast. And if you want to grow your audience just a few minutes a day, this isn't going to be a full-time job. I'm asking you to take 15 to 30 minutes a day, and this can be working in your favor. That's what I want to teach you during this workshop. Let's go back up again here. By the end of this program, you're going to have a clear step-by-step -step blueprint to grow your audience. You're going to be able to do that consistently and implement that blueprint in as little as 15 minutes a day. You're going to consistently attract listeners who become raving fans, share your podcast, and purchase your programs and your courses and your products. And you're going to create a money machine to generate revenue with your podcast. If you want to come join Roger and I, we're going to do this. Build your podcast audience and money machine next Monday. Enrollment is just $197. And you can sign up at vancouverbusinessnetwork.com slash eric-k.johnson. Um, dash is in there, not dots. And they're both Ks. Make sure you spell that correctly. You'll get right where you need to go. And uh, I would love to have you come join us. I will walk you through it. I'll hold your hand. I'll answer all of your questions. I'll give you a fill in the blank worksheets. I'm going to make this as easy as, as possible for you. Uh, so head on over to VancouverBusinessNetwork.com slash Eric-K-Johnson. And uh, you can enroll there for $197. If you have a business partner or you want to launch a podcast together, the two of you, uh, you can both come for $197, but it does have to be the same business and same podcast. You can't uh, call your buddy from Florida and get him on with his own podcast. This has to be the two people in the same business uh, using the same Zoom link. You can get in and enroll for $197 for the two of you. But I'd love to help you start attracting your ideal clients with a podcast. I can't wait to uh, see what you're able to accomplish and the clients you're able to attract and how you're able to to grow that business. So thanks a lot for uh, giving me the time today. I truly appreciate it. Let me know how I can help in any way. Enjoy the free gift. And I, I can't wait to see it in the uh, Build Your Podcast Audience and Money Machine Workshop. Thanks so much, Eric. Uh, uh, participants, I have typed the uh, link to the uh, workshop into the chat. Uh, Eric, uh, we got some questions here for you. Uh, what's the suggested agenda for the first episode and how do you qualify yourself to your audience? I think Eric, Dave, uh, this is from David. I think David means how do you demonstrate your credibility to your audience? The first episode should be all about your story. How did you get where you are? What uh, struggles, 
where, how did your journey progress to get you to where you are to make you an expert in whatever, uh, whatever it is you do. My first episode was all about my journey from architecture school, uh, from growing up in that little house, going to architecture school, falling in love with radio, spending 30 years in radio, developing uh, on-air radio talent and successful radio stations. That was my story. And that was my, that, that, uh, built my credibility in the space and told people exactly what I do. That's what your first episode should be about. It should be about your story. Adam wants to know, do you have any places or recommendations on outsourcing the editing of the podcast to save time? I'm building that right now. Shoot me an email, uh, eric at podcasttalentcoach.com. Um, I offer that service. Jacinta asked this question at the time you were talking about building your audience. Jacinta's question is, how do you bring them in? How do you attract your audience and get them to come listen to your show? Yes. Um, a lot of people, when they get on and they go interview on other podcasts or they get on summits like this, they spend a lot of time sending people to their, uh, to their lead magnet or go check out my website or follow me on social media. Uh, what I recommend you do is say, go listen to my podcast because everything you want your audience to know should be included in your podcast. So if you go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash podcasts, you'll see all my podcasts. So if you want to bring people in, every time you have a chance to get in front of an audience, talk about your podcast. And Govinder wants to know, are you putting on the workshop uh, on any other days other than uh, that Saturday, couple of Saturdays from now? Depends how much fun Roger and I have on this one, I guess. <laughs> oh. If we if we knock it out of the park, who knows? We might launch it again. But as of right now, this is the only one we have scheduled. Great. And there are no further questions. So, Eric, on behalf of the Vancouver Business Network and the Entrepreneurs International Network family of 21 meetups, I uh, thank you profoundly for this great information. There was a ton of it. It was delivered in, uh, in, uh, with, with absolute clarity, precision, uh, no fluff, no nonsense, just what entrepreneurs want. So hey, uh, take, it and thank you. Take, take action. That's all I got to tell you. I gave you a lot of information and nothing, nothing moves, nothing happens until you take action. Roger, thanks for having me. I love you. <laughs> Ditto. Okay.